Right, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss how Boris Johnson is preparing to break yet another Brexit promise and threatening our ability to continue to participate in top level international standard scientific research and all in the name of his brainless self-defeating Brexit dogma. But first if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So scientific research is something that the UK is rather good at. There are some areas where we genuinely punch well above our weight and this is one of them. In fact we give one of the absolute best return on investment into scientific research of all advanced economies. It may actually be the best. I know it was the best a few years ago. I'm just not that up to date on it so it, I can at least say one of the best. But the problem with Brexit is that the specific line that the Tories took works against it. Scientific research is based on international collaboration and you need to attract the brightest minds. Our hostile environment policy has made it uncomfortable for many academics to live and work here. Even though the government say that well, of course with our new immigration policy highly skilled people are welcome, you know, point your, you'll easily get the points. They're not. You know, there were stories abounding over the last year or so of top academics who, yes, they were given leave to remain in the UK, they're fine, but their families were not. Now, it's, it's no use saying that Professor Cleverclogs is welcome here if their husband or wife is not. And this was always going to damage our ability to continue to deliver the outstanding results for which we are really regarded internationally. But in an attempt to retain some scientific credibility after Brexit, Boris Johnson wanted the UK to remain within Horizon, which is the EU's programme for funding European research. Johnson was dropping us out of almost all EU programmes, to our detriment. As a result of this, for example, our police now have a much tougher time tracking down criminals. Johnson wanted to make a big show of pulling out of everything with the EU stamp on it, even if it worked against our own national interest, which it did basically every time. We were going to be a completely independent nation and that means we have our own versions of everything. Do you remember? We're even going to have our own version of, of, of SatNav. We're going to pull out the EUs, we're going to have our own, our own satellites, navigation satellites. It's happened to them. We bought into a company that made, well, a bankrupt company that makes the wrong sort of satellites they've gone very quiet on that since. Basically he's turning the UK into a hermit nation but under the radar there were a few schemes he still actually wanted us to be part of. One of them was the Lugano Convention which is important for those wanting to do business around Europe because it's a system of court access that I've talked about in the past and the EU was initially happy for us to remain in Lugano but has been more hesitant as we have been acting in bad faith regarding our treaties. Horizon is another scheme that Johnson was keen for us to remain part of. But just as with Lugano, the EU are reported to be being difficult about this. The pro-Brexit Telegraph is reporting that the UK is threatening to pull out of Horizon due to Brussels holding up access. The Telegraph phrased this as political vengeance on the EU's part. And I'm not sure where that line came from, whether it came from them or our unelected Brexit Minister David Frost. But it will be both correct and incorrect, depending on how you look at it. If they are suggesting that this is revenge for our leaving the EU, that is not correct. The EU are actually keen for us to remain as close to them as possible. Of course they do. They don't actually want a rogue state on their borders, much less one with such a large economy. That would be silly. However, it is almost certain that their reluctance to rubber stamp our access to Horizon is due to misbehaviour elsewhere. It won't have anything to do with Horizon itself. But this is another aspect of Brexit that many of us have painstakingly tried to explain to these morons. You can't just peri cherry pick the bits of Brexit that you want and the bits you don't want. Access to Horizon can't be seen as separate to other aspects of our relationship with the EU. Right now we have a government who sold their oven ready deal as a great result for the UK, specifically Northern Ireland. Now they're saying it's unworkable. They are unilaterally changing the terms of the treaty they signed with the EU and threatening to scrap it all together. Against that background, how stupid would the EU be to not deny us what we wanted in other areas? Like, if another country was ignoring aspects of a treaty that they had with us, 
the gammons of this nation would absolutely be in favour of our being uncooperative in some other area in order to get our point across. In fact, they wouldn't just be in favour of it, they'd be demanding it. So it seems as ever churlish for these Brexit supporters to complain about the EU being difficult with Lugano and Horizon when we are breaching a treaty with them. In fact, more than churlish, just a position that makes them look deeply stupid. So what is Johnson's response to this? Is it to calm the situation by reaffirming our commitment to the agreement that he personally signed, that he personally whipped his MPs to vote for in Parliament, and that he personally won a general election on the back of? No, 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 no. He's turning to the only thing Brexiteers know how to do. He's going to cut off our nose to spite our face. So he's now threatening to just pull out of Horizon. This is very much like trying to get a food to get food in a cafe and the owner being difficult because you don't seem to be showing your willingness to pay for it. So in response, you simply threaten to walk out without their food. All, all right then. I mean, if you weren't going to pay for it anyway, you're not really welcome to it. And just as that person will walk away hungry, so too will we leave with our scientific capabilities much reduced. British-based academics will be increasingly shut out of major research projects, so the best and brightest will have to move abroad. The non-British academics that will absolutely have to move away to where the top research has been carried out, no ties to them, uh, we will suffer a brain drain away from the country, which will have a knock-on effect on the next generation of British scientists as well. Without being able to learn from world leaders in their field, and with fewer opportunities in the country, you know, job opportunities, we may end up with fewer people pursuing a career in science. After all, if there's no job at the end of it, what's the point? They're difficult to do. It's hard work, no job at the end of it. I think I'll just do something else. And this is crazy. I've, you know, as I've already mentioned, this is an area where we actually do really well in. It generates a huge return, purely in economic terms, on our investments. But at a time like this, it just seems even crazier. See, imagine, for example, where our vaccine programme would be without a strong scientific base in Britain. Consider that we only managed to steal a march on the vaccination rollout because we prevented the export of COVID vaccines from the UK while still importing them from other countries. It was a bit of a dirty trick that was only possible because, you know, one of the most successful vaccines was developed and produced in Britain. If Johnson continues down this path, this will not occur for the next big pandemic because vaccine nationalism is abounding across the world. People talking about the richer countries getting ahead on vaccinations, it's not actually quite true. It's the countries that produced one in their own territories. And obviously these are all wealthy nations, but there are also other wealthy nations that have struggled to get supplies, you know, where they've been entirely reliant on imports. So next time, if we've wrecked our scientific base of operations, we'll also be reliant on imports. You know, we will be stuck in a very long queue, a bit like Canada were initially. Finally, what we have here is also a good general Brexit lesson. Never mind the mudslinging, look at the facts of the matter. Even this pro-Brexit Telegraph article, which is frothing at the EU, is clear that this is something the UK wants. We want to be a member of Horizon. The EU gets to decide whether we are or are not. This is where the whole Brexit edifice comes crashing down. Brexiteers cannot name a single tangible benefit of Brexit. In fact, the papers are all reporting downsides. Downsides, downsides, downsides. Yeah, they're blaming the EU for it. Still downsides. Our so-called new trade deals are all worse than the ones we had before. Our trade is suffering. Trap these people to name a benefit and all they have to fall back on well, we get to decide things for ourselves now. Oh, really? Well, we decided that we wanted to remain part of Horizon. So what's happening there then? Oh, the EU are being difficult. Oh, so it's the EU that are deciding that for us, is it? We decided to put a customs border in the Irish Sea. Why isn't that going smoothly? Well, the EU are being difficult. Oh, so the EU are deciding things inside the UK as well, are they? Where's the control then? Maybe we should stop asking for a tangible benefit of Brexit. Maybe we should switch the question to, can you show me a tangible example of where we've actually decided something for ourselves then? But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.